In this video, I'll go over how to use the Epson scanner in our lab. Please note that we have two types of Epson scanners, the V700 and 11000XL. Both models do exactly the same thing. The 11000XL just has a larger scanning surface. The first thing you'll want to do is check to see if the scanner is on, and then place your item to be scanned on the scanner bed. For the V700, the on button is here, and the green light will show just above it. The 11000XL's button is here, and there should be a green light here. Next, you'll place your item to be scanned on the scanner bed. Lift the lid, and make sure the glass is free of dust or fingerprints. Wipe the surface down with a microfiber cloth if needed. Note the white triangle in the corner of the 11000XL and the black arrow in the corner of the V700. This is where you want to place your item. Also, take note of the markings that say max, as the scanner does not cover the entire glass area, just to the max lines. With your item loaded, close the lid and open the program. First place to look is on the dock. If you bring your mouse down to the bottom of the screen, the dock will come up. You're looking for an icon that looks like a scanner, and if you hover over it, it should read Epson Scan. If you do not have one in your dock, or if the one in the dock is not working, then click on the magnifying glass on the top right corner of your screen. Search for Epson Scan, hit enter, and wait for it to open. It could take a minute. With the program open, the first thing you want to look at is the mode here at the top of the window. No matter what you are doing, you want this set to Professional Mode. This will give you full control of all the settings. Next, look at the section labeled Original. The first option is Document Type. Unless you are scanning film, you want this to say Reflective. I'll teach you film scanning in another video. The next two options are usually left at default for most of what is scanned. The next section is labeled Destination. These are the settings for your file when your scan is complete. Image type is usually left at 24-bit color for everything, even if scanning something that is in black and white. Next is resolution, and this one is very important. What you set this to will be determined by what you will be doing with the file when you're done. 300 dpi is the standard for printing, so if there is even the slightest chance that this scan will be printed or used in something that will be printed, have it set to 300. For web use or computer use only, the resolution can vary anywhere between 72 and 180. But since this is a print lab, I'll leave mine at 300. Next is document size. And this is mostly a reference to the size of the item being scanned. You can't change this area. After that, you will see target size. This is where you will change the final file size. If you do not see this area, just click this little triangle. You can either type in the dimensions that you need or increase the percentage. But don't worry about touching this just yet. The next section is adjustments, and you really only need to use this if you are adjusting things like contrast or color, but programs such as Photoshop are better for this anyway. So now look to the bottom, and you have two buttons, Preview and Scan. You're gonna start with Preview. The scanner will then do a quick scan of the entire bed. With the Preview window open, you can now make a selection of the area you want scanned. You do this simply by clicking and dragging. If you mess up, don't try to click again. You can just adjust the box that is there. Now that there is a selection, you'll notice that the document size numbers have changed and the target size has changed to match. At this point, you will adjust the target size to the dimension you need. And now, you will click Scan. A new window will open, and in the top section labeled Location, you'll want to select Other, and have the file saved to the desktop. No matter what, always save to the desktop and then move it later. The scan will go faster this way. The next section is where you will name your file. If you are scanning a set of anything, the software will actually increment your file name for you, starting with this number. And finally, you want to select your image format, whether it be JPEG or TIFF or PDF. I will select JPEG and click OK, which will start the scan. This could take a few minutes, depending on the resolution you selected. The higher the resolution, the slower the scan. Once the scan is complete, it will return you to Epson Scan, and you can repeat the process, or be done. I hope this helped, and that you learned something new. Take care, and keep learning.